So this idea of the bad boy guy who's instantly exciting to you and then and then you being this sort of picture even to him of this really good, went to Catholic school, never did anything wrong, all that. And I just wonder if someone bought into that idea of you just being this this person trying to do good and having this sort of Mayberry-esque uh, upbringing, what we would miss if we just bought into that story? Well, I'm extremely codependent. It is, I shatter a little bit when I think people don't like me. That's part of why I lead with kindness and, and I compensate by being very bubbly all the time because it, it, I don't know, it really hurts my feelings when I'm not liked. And I know that's not very healthy and I fight it all the time. And I mean, I guess I would, I would, looking back, I would probably have been, I mean, I was a popular girl, but I was always nervous right under the surface that someone would reject me. And so I changed who I was often. I changed my interests based on what my friends liked. And it wasn't, I, I really didn't realize that until I was in my 30s that I had sort of changed for everybody. And I think I also, Struggled a lot with anxiety and depression. You did? Uh-huh. My mom sat me down when I was probably 18, and she said, there is a, a serotonin imbalance in our family line, and it can often be passed from female to female, and your grandma, my grandmother was one of the first people they tested electroshock therapy on. Because she was nuts. Me. No, she would lock herself in her bedroom and, and drink for two days and they would slide food under the door and like it was it was rough. I mean it it certainly affected my mom and broke her a little bit, but she's a nurse and she had the wherewithal to recognize that in herself when she was feeling it. And when I was 18 said if you start to feel like you are twisting things around you and you start to feel like there is no sunlight around you and you you are paralyzed with fear, this is what it is and here's how you can help yourself. And I've always had a really open and honest dialogue about that, especially with my mom, which I'm so grateful for because you have to be able to cope with it. I mean, I present this very cheery, bubbly person, yeah. but I also do a lot of work. I do a lot of introspective work and I check in with myself when I need to exercise. And And I, you know, got on a prescription when I was really young to help with my anxiety and depression and I still take it today. And I have no shame in that. Wow. Because my mom had said to me, if you start to feel this way, talk to your doctor, talk to a psychologist, see where how you want to help yourself. And if you do decide to go on a prescription to help yourself, understand that the world wants to shame you for that. But in the medical community, you would never deny a diabetic his insulin. Right, of course. Ever. But for some reason, when someone needs a, a serotonin inhibitor, they they're immediately crazy or something and I don't know it, it's a it's an, a very interesting double standard that I, I I don't often have the ability to talk about but I, I certainly feel no shame about <laughs>